the second of two days of interviews of candidates for the city of phoenix ethics commission by the ad hoc committee uh, on ethics commission appointments these meetings will be recorded and rebroadcast on our youtube channel uh, this committee will interview candidates with the intent of recommending five for a vote of the whole council. The commission requires two Republicans, two Democrats, and one unaffiliated member. Appointed commissioners will serve for a term of five years, except that one Republican and one Democrat appointee will serve an initial term of three years. The ad hoc committee will recommend candidates for appointment to the Ethics Commission to the full council on a future agenda of the city's formal council meetings for appointment to the commission by the affirmative vote of seven council members. Hearing a brief introduction on meeting procedures, we'll begin with item two, the oral comments related to candidates for the City of Phoenix Ethics Commission. Thank you, Councilman Waring. Uh, as was stated, this meeting is recorded and will be rebroadcast on the City of Phoenix YouTube channel. Item two on the agenda is for public comment and open to members of the public. They're registered to speak a minimum of one hour in advance of the meeting, candidates for the City of Phoenix Ethics Commission may listen to or watch this item as well. Item three on the agenda is the interview of candidates for the City of Phoenix Ethics Commission. This item is open to the public, but candidates who have not yet completed their interview are prohibited. All candidates who have not yet interviewed will be asked to leave the meeting prior to beginning interviews. Candidates are prohibited from listening to, hearing, or obtaining information from interviews held prior to their own interview to avoid gaining any perceived advantage in the process. Accordingly, the meeting will be locked from joining five minutes after each interview begins and will be unlocked again at the completion of that candidate's interview. Item four on the agenda will occur after interviews are completed. The ad hoc committee members may convene an executive session for item four. Once the ad hoc committee members have completed their deliberation, the public meeting will resume. Item five on the agenda provides an opportunity for the ad hoc committee to make a recommendation of candidates for appointment to the city council for approval by the affirmative vote of seven council members. We will now move to the next item in the agenda. Item two is a public comment period, allowing speakers who have registered to speak a minimum of one hour in advance of the meeting to provide testimony related to candidates who are being interviewed for the city of Phoenix ethics commission at today's meeting. Members of the public who have registered to speak will provide two minutes to provide their testimony. Before we begin the item, the staff will provide an admonition a statement for those wishing to speak. Thank you. Speakers must present their comments in a respectful and courteous manner. Profane language and personal attacks on applicants, members of the public, council members, or staff are not allowed. A person who violates these rules can lose their opportunity to speak. Thank you. I'll now go to Matt Heil uh, to call upon members of the public who have registered to speak on this item. Thank you, Councilman. Our first speaker is Kevin Bashaw. Kevin, are you on the line? Kevin, hello, are you on the line? Hello, Kevin, can you hear me? Can we go to our next speaker and then go back to Kevin? Our next speaker is Jeremy Thacker. Hello, Jeremy. This is Matt Heil. Are you on the line? I am. Can you hear me? Yes, sir. Please proceed with your comment. Thank you. But yesterday, I listened to every minute of every interview. Uh, and I must say, I was thoroughly impressed by each and every candidate's background and qualifications. Most importantly, I thought each of the candidates demonstrated high levels of empathy and personal integrity. It is for that exact reason that, once again, I'm calling on each of you to withdraw yourself from consideration of the commission. To serve on the commission will have the opposite effect of what each of you intended. You are qualified to hold city uh, officials accountable and serve as ethics thought leaders. But let's be very clear. That is not the job you're being offered. This is an appointment to a grand jury where you decide if the case goes to court, except you'll be sending the cases to a kangaroo court where the defendant and the judge are at best on the same team, and at worst, one in the same. You are not being offered the job of wizard. You're being offered the job of the curtain. Your role is to keep the citizens from seeing what the real power is doing. In the moments when real decisions need to be made, like the curtain, you too will be swept to the side out of you. If you're offended by that, you should be. 
It's offensive how the city has treated all citizens when it comes to the Ethics Commission. If the city was truly interested in your opinions and advice related to ethics, why have they waited until now to contact you when most of you applied three or four years ago? Is a four-year delay a sign of interest? Each of you completed an extensive background application, called in favors to get letters of recommendations, and were screened by judges. And then crickets from city. Prior to the last 30 days, was anyone told the commission wasn't being created, a reason why, or an apology for wasting your time? Uh, no, they must have been too busy making sure police had oversight instead. We all deserve an ethics commission that can restore the public's trust in the city's leadership. This isn't it. And if we could go back to Kevin Bashaw and see if he's on the line. Just one moment while he's moved, I believe, from the waiting area. Hello, Kevin. This is Matt Heil. Uh, can you hear me? Okay, it appears we're not getting audio from Kevin, so we'll have to. So we're sure that that's not a glitch on our end. It looks like he's. That was Jeremy Sacker that just popped up. He was on there earlier. I'm trying to talk. Hello, Kevin. Bye, how are you? Okay. Would you like to provide a public comment? Yes, I'd like to, uh, to talk about Marcel Costello, if I may. Please proceed. Well, I worked with Marcel at the Center for Applied Behavioral Health Policy at ASU. And while she worked there, she uh, interacted with the residents of the Westward Ho, and she's so compassionate. And uh, she's just thorough, objective, research oriented, and like such a team player. And I am just like so lucky to call her a friend. And she just treats all people fairly and with courtesy and with partiality. And she's a very, like a giving person. Uh, just last week, she volunteered with me while I was putting up on a conference for uh, uh, wellness and first responders. And she took time out of her schedule and uh, volunteered to help um, all the first responders uh, zoom in to the meeting. And she moderated sessions, which it was all about mental health and wellness for first responders. And that's just the kind of person she is. She didn't ask for anything in return. She just volunteered her time and it was it was really nice and she's and like lastly i think I, I should talk about like what a fantastic writer she is last uh summer she wrote a fantastic article um in our uh summer institute uh magazine which is all about behavioral health so yeah just i i can't recommend her enough i think she's perfect for this position she's she's thorough and ethical Thank you. Uh, <coughs> wearing that was our last speaker for public comment. All right, we will now move on to the next item on the agenda. Uh, for this item, uh, the meeting will be locked from joining five minutes after each interview begins and will be unlocked again at the completion of that candidate interview. Before the applicants leave, our city attorney will offer some guidelines for the interviewees. <coughs> Thank you, council member. Uh, we want to remind all applicants that they are not to listen to the interviews for the candidates before them. For this reason, uh, when we start and come back at 930, although this is a public meeting, the city has asked for all public participants today to identify themselves. These interviews are in a public meeting, so applicants should refrain from including any personal information that is not responsive or information that uh, you would not like made public. Any candidates who have not yet completed their interviews are asked to leave the meeting before 9.30 and should log in at their scheduled time unless otherwise contacted and directed by staff. Thank you. Thank you. And we do not have a candidate on yet. So our first candidate is not on the line yet. Okay, and we weren't supposed to start till 9.30, correct? Right. So, we'll, so we'll take a short break. Yeah, I think that's fair.
gentlemen, uh, we are ready to resume, um, and we do have the first candidate on the line if you would like to proceed. Thank you. Our first candidate is Lara Van Loben Sells. Lara, are you on the line, and could you please announce yourself? Good morning. Yes, my name is Lara Van Loben Sells. Thank you. Great, thank you. And are you ready to proceed with your interview? I am. My only question, I guess, technologically, can you see me? Because it doesn't appear that my camera is on, and I don't know if it should be. No, we don't see her. We do not see a camera. Let's try this. Cisco WebEx uh, allow. And I don't know if this is required or not, but it yes, seems. There, there it is. We did it. Excellent. Congratulations. <laughs> <laughs> Right. It's been a while since I. It's really refreshing to see somebody like me who also is surprised when it actually works. <laughs> Outstanding. I've had a few of them. I'm like, wow, I made it work. Look at that. Total accident. So, um, pander is refreshing on that. We appreciate it. Um, okay, we're ready to go. You're ready to go. I am. Uh, so we're going to start right with the first question. Um, what do you believe the purpose of the ethics commission is, and how would you help to accomplish it? How would I? How would I help to? to accomplish it. Okay. So my understanding is or um, is I believe one of the goals of establishing this commission would be to convey that the message that ethics is important to the city of Phoenix. So important in fact that we have um, a body that we've identified and created to be responsible for it, delegated with authority to investigate or interpret um, ethics regulations in the city of Phoenix. And also play a role perhaps in identifying training curriculum or training materials um, on, on things we can do as a city to help enhance the ethical climate here in Phoenix. Um, I do think that a commission like this brings the community's voice to the table. Um, my background, I, I'm not an attorney and I've never served in public office before. My background um, is in private industry. I've served in an ethics and integrity capacity with a company that was that was charged with um, evaluating some of those best practices for some fortune 500 companies. I've also been um, in the education sector, so I have an idea of what uh, education and the training curriculum might look like. Um, and then currently I'm in ethic, uh, excuse me, compliance um, in pharmacy law, so pharmacy laws and regulations. So I, I bring with me a, a well-rounded background, um, but if you ask me to, you know, quote a statute or something, I'm not going to be able to do that, but I think I do bring sort of the community or the layperson's perspective on what ethics and integrity means um, with some experience and background on best practices and things we can do and provide transparency to move the city forward in that direction. Um, sort of the voice of reason and the voice of, gosh, I've got a lot of experience from a private industry perspective. Like I said, this would be my first encounter um, on a municipal level, but um, that's what I think I would bring to the table. Thank you. Okay. Councilwoman Clark will ask the second question. Yes, thank you. Can you please describe an example of the ethical decision making you've had to take and what did you use to inform your decision and what was the result? Uh, sure. So, um, a couple of years back, um, at a company that I was working with or working for, um, a couple of folks in the company um, decided that, that they wanted to go out and um, start their own company in a in a very similar, very gray area in terms of being in terms of a non compete type of a thing. Um, they brought that to my attention and asked me to join. Um, and at that point, while we didn't have a non-compete in place, it, it, it felt like it would absolutely be the wrong thing to do and it would be incongruent with, you know, when you're employed with a company, you know, your efforts and, and integrity is geared towards that company. Um, so I brought it to the leadership and we had a meeting and the two folks who were interested in going off on that path I wouldn't say call them the carpet, but they were certainly brought into the meeting, had a very frank discussion. And at the end of that discussion, everybody chose to go their separate ways, as you might expect. Um, but that was tough. 
Um, those were folks that I had worked with for a year, 18 months or so. So I had developed somewhat of a relationship. But again, at the end of the day, it didn't feel congruent with how you should operate you know, for a company that you're employed with and you're supposed to be driving their, their initiatives forward. It felt very underhanded. Thank you. Can you please give us an example of a high profile or highly contentious matter you've been involved in and how you handled it? Sure. Um, several, several years back, 2015 or 16 or so, um, I was, again, when I was working with a company that was very much involved with ethics and integrity um, for Fortune 500 companies and, and larger, um, one of the companies was a major auto manufacturer and they were sort of a flagship for our company. We, we sort of, um, we had a great relationship with them as a, as a company, company to company. And it came to light through a huge consumer recall that there had been an issue with a certain piece of, of the automobile and the engineering standards or whatnot weren't met, but that company, some, somewhere in the department made the decision to go forward with making those, uh, creating those parts that weren't technically within the tolerances that were suggested by the engineering staff, realizing that there was going to be some percentage of failure and potentially realizing that who knows, failure could cause um, a, a catastrophic event for the driver, right? Um, this was a huge consumer issue and we were a small company at the time. And like I said, this, this large automatic auto manufacturer was a big company. So they dealt with a great deal of the blowback. Um, from, from a, a public persona perspective and had to do a lot of, um, you know, repair of their, their public perception. From our perspective, we had to decide if we wanted to continue to keep them as sort of our flagship ethics and integrity company um, partnership. And so we had many meetings to decide, you know, how best to approach that. Um, we, they were a large partner of ours, so there was a great deal of revenue for us involved in that decision. Um, so what, what we ended up doing was keeping them as a partner, but being a part of their public communication in terms of repairing some of the damage that was done to their uh, the, the public perception. And in addition, that kind of brought to light in our company some things that we could do better to make sure that when we were evaluating partnerships, corporate partnerships that we were going to have with companies like this, what kinds of things did we need to take a little bit closer look at? What kinds of rubrics did we need to have to be able to evaluate whether these were going to be beneficial for us? Um, and then also sort of what's the what's the damage control on the back end? Because to a certain extent, you, you can have mitigation me mitigation measures in, in everything that you do, but there's always going to be a human aspect. So it's the also what do you do at the end when something has happened? How do you respond? How do you make sure that your response is transparent, is also ethical, um, and is is something that you can hold to a high standard and, and, and be proud that you went through this process. It's best too good to prevent an issue, but when there was an issue, you had a good process in place to then address it and make sure that it doesn't happen again or put those those kind of processes in place. Um, I'm just curious, have you ever considered running for office? Was like, uh, you know, she's, she laughed. Well, it's a funny question. So my by sort of my last best place is Montana. And so when I retire, I was sort of hoping when I moved to Montana, to have a little cabin or something, um, I would run for um, education board. Cause I would, I would really like to, I'm, I'm a big, big proponent of digital education. And I felt like when I got out of education, we were just on the cusp of digital education. Of course it's changed now in the last year, it's gotten much more prolific, but I want to make sure like states like Montana, small small counties and whatnot that maybe don't have that access can see how amazing. Uh, I was in K twelve, so you can see why I'm excited. Um, how amazing education can be, and from a digital perspective as well. It doesn't always have to be, you know, books that you look around. So in that perspective, education board would be ideal. Why do you ask? Yeah, I I just uh, I'm curious. Sometimes people will take these boards and commissions. Um, 
as a tool to get elected, and I want to make sure people really are going to be here for the right reason, which is to perform the duties of the Ethics Commission. So thank you. Thank you. I'm not going to retire anytime soon. <laughs> so I'm here. I'm here for the duration. <laughs> have one more, unless yeah. one of us thinks of something extra. Is there anything uh, you would like to clarify about your application or candidacy at this time, or is there anything else you would like us to know? Um, well, yeah, thank you for asking. So I, I don't know if you have this history in front of you, but I was interested in this process way back in 2016, 2017, when I first became aware of it, which is when I think the city of Phoenix was first looking into having a commission like this. I went through very, a very similar process. Obviously it was in person. Um, and then it, it, it sort of, I think got put on the back burner and the city got busy with other things. So I'm. I'm, I'm delighted to see that the city is is interested in exploring this again and, and establishing a commission. Um, as I said at the outset, I, you know, I, I'm, I'm not, I'm not a lawyer and I, I haven't held city office. I've been very involved in, in private industry my whole life, but I think we have a really well rounded. Viewpoint and perspective um, to, to the potentially to the commission and I would, I would like very much to. Explore that I would like the opportunity. Um, I do think a commission like this can grow and evolve over time. So if we if we started with, you know, investigating uh, potential complaints and whatnot, and overseeing ethical codes, and then turning into, like I said, maybe recommending training curriculum or advising local officials, and, and then you know, obviously, I don't think we have a great deal of, as I understand it, I don't think there was a great deal of real decision making, but it was more advising, suggesting, and recommending. When there are ethics violations or potential ethics violations, um, and I think it's so nuanced. I mean, there are gray areas all over the place, and having a, a, a well-rounded group of people who are quasi-independent and diligent and and very take this role very very uh, seriously, I think, really puts the city in a good place, and it and it's it's a good thing for us to have, and maybe it does evolve into, um, you know recommendations in, in curriculum and, and things on enforcement and whatnot. Um, I think other cities are doing it. I'm glad that we're finally doing it. I, I'm appreciative of that effort. And I thank you all for having me here this morning. Thank you for participating. Deb, do you have any other? No, thank you. Thank you so much. I see your dog. <laughs> <laughs> thank you. <laughs> no, we're, we're interviewing him or her next. So <laughs> the application right here. <laughs> she's, a, she's a sweetie. I'm a dog for too, if that helps. <laughs> well, thank you very much for your time. We appreciate it. Thank you. Thank you all. I appreciate your time. Take care. Good morning, Mr. Langley. This is Matt Heil. Can you hear me? And would you please announce your presence? I can hear you. Can everyone hear me? Yes, sir. We can hear you. Um, we don't see any video yet, if you have any. And he doesn't have to, right? Man? No, he does not. Um, but are you ready? Oh, oh, there he is. There we are. And sir, are you ready to proceed with your interview? I, I am, if everyone else is ready. We are. Julie, you have a uh, disclaimer. Yes, thank you. Uh, good morning. I wanted to remind you that these interviews are in public. They are being recorded. So uh, you should refrain from including any personal information in that is not in response to the question or information that you do not want made public. Okay. Thank you. That's it. And we're ready to start. I'm going to ask the first question if you're ready. Thank you. Uh, what do you believe the... Okay. <laughs> What do you believe the purpose of the Ethics Commission is, and how would you help accomplish it? Okay, first of all, uh, good morning and happy Friday to everybody. And thank you for the opportunity uh, to speak with you today. Uh, and that, that is a uh, great question. And uh, really the purpose of uh, the Ethics Commission, uh, in my view, is to help uh, restore some of the, the trust I think uh, that's lost uh, in government. I mean, it's at an all time low, and unfortunately, for all of us, it did support that position. Uh, last year, uh, Pew found that 73% of the public uh, can't even agree on basic facts, and so there have been some 
high profile controversies uh, making local and national headlines uh, recently. And, and so, like, that presents certain reputational risks. Uh, I think that's particularly important. Uh, in the second, uh, America's fifth largest city. And so, uh, I believe the fact that uh, I have an executive in the UK and will see my law next year uh, will be an asset and help restore some of that credibility. Uh, and just as an example, uh, since the, the pandemic, I, I've tried to uh, do my part uh, by reporting and, and monitoring several instances of father backers to try to take advantage of the PPE program uh, and that funding uh, from those who need that involved. So um, I, I'd be very comfortable with the uh, any type of fraud, waste, and abuse uh, using um, the power of the Commission. Can I can I interject here? So the audio isn't quite as clear. I think I can make out like with the technology when we play this back. This is being recorded and will be played back. But some of what you were saying was a little bit garbled. I don't have the best hearing, frankly. So is that me or is all you kind of hearing it the same thing? And is there something that can be done about it? Uh, I think it's on his end. It's on his end. Okay. Um, uh, so on the tape, it'll sound the same as we just heard it. Is that better? Oh, yes. Oh, yes. yes, much, much better. Yeah, I'm sorry. I, I don't, just for some of it, I was starting to have a hard time hearing. And that's, you know, it's not fair to the candidate. It's not fair to everybody. No so, problem. I'm happy to repeat it if, if. Maybe, uh, you, maybe you could just repeat it. Seems this get worse kind of like halfway through. Okay. If that's okay. Yeah, sure. If you want to do the whole thing, that's fine too. Whatever you think. <laughs> so, so really, um, I think what's central to, to ethics is uh, trust and, and trust in government. Uh, and so that's what I was was really trying to get at. And uh, I was saying that uh, people now, and, and there's research to back this up from Pew uh, that say that, uh, that they can't even really agree on basic facts. Uh, and so one of the things that I w wanted to do is use uh, my my educational experience, uh, I have both an executive MBA and will be receiving uh, my my law degree uh, next year uh, to help restore some of that credibility. Uh, and so I'm not sure if you, you caught the end, but I was saying uh, as part of my my work uh, experience since the pandemic, I've actually tried to do my part uh, in relation to that. I've uh, monitored and reported several instances of, of fraud uh, and by bad actors uh, and who who had tried to take advantage of the PPP uh, program, those fundings for, from those who needed it most. And so I was saying that I would uh, be comfortable with detecting uh, fraud, waste, uh, and abuse uh, with the power uh, of uh, the commission. So hopefully that was that was clearer. Yeah, that was that was much better. And I'm not presuming to tell you what to do or your business, but you might want to get a yellow sticky note and put it next to that button, whatever you pressed, and clear <laughs> everything up perfectly. So um, I was using Bluetooth. You, that, that, so that's that's what what about. <laughs> I, just, I, I didn't feel it'd be fair, you know. I, I, like you guys know what I was saying, it was starting to get kind of rocky. So all set. So Deb. Thank you. So are you going to ASU for your law school? I'm not actually uh, U of A uh, just started uh, a program in Maricopa County. Uh, and so <laughs> I have my executive MBA from uh, U of A as well. So it, it made sense to, to continue uh, there. Well, as a sun devil, could you please, <laughs> please describe an example of ethical decision making you had to take and what did you use to inform your decision and what was the result? Right. Yeah. So uh, I think that perfect example with, with the PPP, uh, it, of course, it's a it's a federal program, but uh, the the uh, the waste and abuse portion of, of taxpayer dollar government funds, I think, uh, is is really relevant uh, here. Uh, and so uh, certainly you have to identify it. You have to gather the relevant data and, and the facts and. Uh, what I did uh, from there uh, was actually reported it to uh, both local and, and uh, federal authorities uh, as well. And so, you know, what they decide uh, with that recommendation uh, and, and that uh, those allegations is, is, is up to them uh, at that point. Uh, but I, I take that very seriously, uh, especially when it comes to, you know, taxpayer funding. Uh, 
Um, so that is uh, certainly something that I'm I'm uh, a, a keen at identifying. Uh, let's say, and uh, would be more than happy to use what, whatever resources at my disposal to to uh, accomplish that. Thank you. Yes, sir. Can you please give us an example of a high profile or highly contentious matter you've been involved in and how you handled it? it yeah, that's uh, a, a, also a, a great question. And so uh, one of the things uh, that uh, I have a lot of experience is uh, I work to find common ground with both uh, Republicans and, and Democrats uh, on the Arizona Advisory Committee with the U.S. Global Leadership Coalition. Uh, and so uh, one thing uh, that we have to uh, work on specifically is issues with national security uh, and and public safety. Uh, and so um, there was a, a a budget item uh, that was was highly contentious uh, contentious uh, with uh, the previous administration. Um, they wanted to cut uh, some some federal dollars uh, that went to uh, to fund. Uh, essentially a raft of, of programs that help protect um, national security through uh, both development and diplomacy. And so um, I was able to convene a group of uh, individuals in business who worked in nonprofit, who were military leaders, um, who were humanitarians, uh, let's say as well, who came together and approached members of our congressional delegation, again, both Republican and Democrat, to uh, essentially put a stop to uh, those disproportionate cuts uh, and, and restore uh, some of that funding, again, in the name of, of security, uh, diplomacy, and, and, and public safety as well. So um, the next question, I, I noticed in your... Um application and we and we have a very thorough application process that you had run um, the city council and um, my, I, I'm going to ask you are you considering running for elected office in the future and the reason why I do is I just want to make sure that you're in it for the right reasons that you're here to be a part of the ethics um, commission and not use it as a platform um, so if you could speak to that a little bit I would appreciate that. <laughs> absolutely. And, and that's an absolutely fair question. And, you know, I, I'm definitely looking at service. Uh, for me, uh, it's like everyone on this call, I want our city to reach its full potential. Uh, that is not uh, about running for any type of position. I'm, I'm actually con very content uh, doing what I'm, I'm doing right now. I think I have uh, a... Uh, a bigger impact on community uh, because I've actually worked at the intersection of, of business, government, nonprofit with stakeholders to address some of the biggest challenges in our community. Uh, and, and um, you know, I've spoken at city council meetings before, et cetera. I, and I've also been appointed onto committees uh, of esteem, including uh, Central City Village uh, Planning Committee and, and served on that. Uh, with uh, the late councilman good for two years and, and we took some count consequential votes. And so uh, services are embedded in, in my DNA. And so that's why I actually enrolled in law school uh, at this stage of my career. So I could use uh, data, public private partnerships and the law to solve uh, some of these complex problems. Um, and so I think I have a very uh, unique uh, background and, and perspective uh, from which to draw. Uh, and so that that's really uh, important to me. And, and just so you know, I also sit on the board of Arizona Town Hall. Uh, and so we we actually convene leaders from around the state uh, to gather input and, and recommend action on some pertinent issues. And so this year's theme, as an example, is creating vibrant communities. Uh, and uh, so last month, I actually was part of the crew, which helped uh, get uh, 1,200 uh, essential workers vaccinated over at Cesar Chavez. And so, uh, you know, I, I'm comfortable working with elected officials, staff, community stakeholders to that end. Um, also, you know, I just uh, was part of the Business Relations Committee, actually, uh, with uh, Phoenix Sister Cities, 
uh, as, as you probably see there, uh, that organized the conference that's running concurrently <laughs> with this session, uh, with this session. And so I say all that just to, to say that I understand the expectations and the decorum. Uh, and so it's important to me that the relationship um, is, is, is transparent, uh, but also the support is, is reciprocal. Uh, and so I hope that that answers um, your question. Yes, and I hope I didn't make you uncomfortable by asking that. But uh, and I, I, I can recall a few times you've come down to speak at council meetings. So thank you. Uh, I'm going to ask a, a small follow up. Okay. So when did you run? Forgive me for not remembering. And what district were you in when you did? So so this was uh, when uh, Mayor Gallego had resigned uh, to to run for mayor. So uh, District Eight. Uh, this was about three years ago now. Um, and so that, uh, again, uh, service uh, is, is very important to me. Uh, I have a uh, family who, of course, served in the military, as I, as I assume most people have. Uh, and so uh, that's always been ingrained in me in very, very young age. So however I can get involved uh, is important to me. And that's why I serve on uh, so many boards and, and committees. Um, and, and so, um, yeah. <laughs> Well, the reason I asked was uh, you, you live in District 4 now, it sounds like. But yeah, so I, I was like, I was trying to remember the race and it wasn't coming to me. And now I understand why it's a different race, uh, different district. Um, so that we do have one final question. Is there anything you would like to clarify about your application or candidacy at this time? Or is there anything else you would like us to know? All right. Well, you know, again, I think um, it, it's important for me to, and for you uh, also to understand. I, I've been in Phoenix for almost six years, but but you know, I have a, I have a track record of involvement from very very early on. I'm I'm really familiar with how city business is conducted, as as we've alluded to, I think already uh, on this call. And so, uh, when I moved here, I had participated even in a training. Uh, with uh, the the Arizona League of Cities uh, and towns about what uh, municipal officials uh, need to know. Uh, and again, I, I think this is just uh, incredibly important. And I think you need someone with the, the unique background and experience that I have that understands uh, both uh, the, the policy and the, the public need for uh, ethics, but also uh, how to do it as efficiently uh, as possible. Uh, and so I just uh, appreciate the opportunity to be considered uh, for this. Uh, I, I think uh, I would be um, a, a great choice uh, considering uh, that background and, and experience, uh, as I mentioned. Uh, and I am happy to work with uh, everyone uh, on the council, uh, outside of the council, uh, the legal department, uh, whoever else uh, that I need uh, to make sure that we are upholding uh, the city's values. So, thank you. Do you have any further questions? Yeah, thank you. Thank you very much for your time. We appreciate it very much. Sorry about the technical glitch at the beginning. Councilman, I believe that we have our next candidate on the line if you're ready to proceed. Thank you. Uh, have we confirmed that she can hear us? We can hear her. I will do that right now. Marcel Costello, are you on the line? Marcel Costello, can you hear me? And could you please uh, confirm that you are on the line? I am. It looks like I was muted. You you are not muted, and I can hear you. Thank you very much. So, if you are ready to proceed with your interview, we can uh, begin. There she is. Hi. Uh, before we begin, uh, Julie has a disclaimer. Julie, go ahead. Thank you. Uh, good morning. Um, I just want to remind you that these interviews are in public. This is being recorded. So you should refrain from including any personal information um, that is not in response to a question. And also uh, be aware that any information that you would not like made public, you should refrain from talking about. Okay, I understand. All right, thank you. Uh, if you're ready to proceed, I'll ask the first question. Uh, what do you believe the purpose of the Ethics Commission is and how would you help to accomplish it? Well, the purpose is to listen. Uh, it's important for every city government to have an Ethics Commission. And in my research, I noticed that the city of Phoenix is the only 
city of the top, top 10 largest cities in America that does not have an ethics commission established. It's a place for persons who are concerned about the operation of our city government to go and have their concerns heard, investigated, and then the commission would then report back to the board uh, on our findings with a recommendation as to what should be done about the complaint. I can further this because I am naturally incredibly scientific. I am objective in nature. I'm ethical. And I'm also a darn good writer. And all of this work would, re would require excellent communications and written communications. I have an English degree from UC Berkeley, which is the top English department in the country. And I also have experience writing government documents when I worked for ASU as a graduate student worker last year. So I think I'm quite well qualified to serve in this capacity for the Ethics Commission. Deb. Okay. Could you please describe an example of ethical decision making you've had to take? And what did you use to inform your decision? And what was the result? Probably the, the example that I can give you uh, that's most recent is uh, a little bit light, but I, th I think it, it says something. I was hiking out in Phoenix Mountains Park, and I had come back through the back valley through Dreamy Draw, and I had been with my dog for about 40 minutes. And it was at that time where I saw the sign from the city government that said, dogs are not allowed on the summit, climb. And I didn't want to go back and spend another 40 minutes tracking where I had come from. But on the other hand, I knew I was going to be breaking city code by doing that. And I was raised by my parents to believe that the measure of a man or woman is what they would do if they would not be found out, whether, whether it was for good or for bad. And I'm standing there with my dog 40 minutes into it, and I turned around and went back because that is the rule and, that, and there's good reason for that rule to exist. Um, it's light, but it's true. You got your exercise in that day, huh? <laughs> Apple Watch. <laughs> <laughs> Give us an example, please, of a high profile or highly contentious matter you've been involved in and how you handled it. Oh, wow. That's, that's an easy one. I was on the uh, board of directors for the San Francisco Zoological Society and Gardens on the Christmas Eve that a tiger escaped and attacked and killed a visitor. Um, that incident. Uh, uncovered. It was kind of the, the cancer, the symptom that showed the underlying disease within the organization. And we were tasked with not only responding to this very public event and also the lawsuits that ensued, uh, but we were also tasked with uncovering all of the untoward policies that uh, we're not necessarily directly related to the tiger escaping, although we did find that the wall was under uh, code for zoos. It was about four feet short. Um, however, anyway, we as a board had to work together to not only deal with the crisis in public, but also the crisis in private and also the crisis within our organization and our employees. And um, I think that experience has set me up for being able to handle something like an inaugural ethics commission that people are very interested in and will be watching. And I think based on what I've learned from Steve Singer, who is our crisis communication specialist that we brought in, I, I can add a lot to the public aspect of this position. Great. Have you ever considered running for elected office? Yes. Uh, I am the kind of person that you were supposed to leave your farm and go out and serve the public for a couple of years, like our, our founders said, and then go back to your farm. <laughs> and I'm at a point in my life where I, I've done a lot of farming. I've raised uh, two kids who are 23 years old and are off in their careers. Uh, my husband works an awful lot, and I thought, well, I would like to serve. 
on the other hand, I have um, paid attention to city politics and what it takes. It takes a lot of money, it takes a lot of time. I'm not sure I have that kind of energy, but I absolutely would have energy to be involved in a commission and do a very good job for the commission. So I, I think this would satisfy my longing to leave the farm, serve, and then go back. Great, thank you. Uh, we have one final question, unless something else is spurred by the uh, this last one. Is there anything you would like to clarify about your application or candidacy at this time, or is there anything else you would like us to know? Uh, yeah, there is more that I would like you to know. Uh, my application has not been updated in the time since I applied. Uh, I have uh, become a graduate student. I am study for, studying for a master's degree in psychology. I am also quite involved in uh, my board leadership of six years with an organization called the Addiction Education Society. I have since been uh, elected as board secretary of that organization. We provide, I'm very proud of this, a nonprofit evidence-based uh, curriculum to high schoolers on the brain science behind this terrible brain disease. And we have positively impacted over 10,000 kids to date in California. That's where the nonprofit is located. And uh, I've even read that we are considered one of the best assignments they've had to do all year in school. <laughs> so that is something I'm very proud of and I will continue to do as I also serve in this capacity. Assuming I'm, I'm selected. Pardon me. Anything uh, else, Deb? Uh, no, thank you. Thank you so much, and 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 thanks for your patient and patience in this process. Um, well, thank you. And I do appreciate the update as well. So thank you. Okay. Now we are going into executive session. This was the final interview. Yes, Councilman. That was our last interview for the day. Okay. Thank you. I Thank you very much. Thank you. We're sorry. <laughs> so we're, we're moving into executive session. I need to make a motion. We need to vote on that motion. Correct. All agreed on that's what we're doing. Okay. Uh, I now move uh, to move the meeting into an executive session for this next item. And I would concur. Second. All in favor, say aye. 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 Opposed, say nay. I just have it. We're moving into executive session. We can begin if you're ready. Thank you. So I believe it's appropriate to bring the meeting back to order. Yes, sir. Any staff have any thoughts to address? Are we good? Okay. Thank you. Uh, with your permission. Yes. Madam Co-Chair, I will uh, be pleased to announce okay. the members of the Ethics Commission. Uh, the first, the independent position will be filled by Michael J. Langley. Cheryl Pikowitz will fill the five-year term as a Republican. Sam Labus will fill the three-year term as a Republican. Carlos uh, Galindo Alvira will serve the five-year term as a Democrat. Lynette Campbell will serve the three-year term as a Democrat. Any further business? And I would concur. Thank you. Thank you. <clears throat> so uh, ad hoc committee members, uh, your recommendation will be forwarded to the full council for action uh, in due course. I don't know which date, but we'll, okay. we'll know shortly. Okay. Perfect. Thank you for your support. We appreciate it very much. Yeah. Thank you. No reason not to adjourn the meeting. The meeting is adjourned. <laughs>